What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Layout 2019 tutorial. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on creating a tiny house in Layout 2019. Um, if you're looking for more layout resources, like other tutorials, link to great, links to great layout books, stuff like that, make sure to check out the SketchupEssentials.com slash layout. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I wanna do in this video is I wanna go through and I want to start adding furnishings to my model and so you can see how um, in the last video we added our doors and our windows so all of our walls and our doors and our windows have kind of been added in here well now I want to start adding things in in this case I'm going to add them from the 3d warehouse sometimes you may model them yourself depending on what you need but I'm going to show you how to organize this and then I'm probably going to speed this up because uh, this video whenever I do this usually turns into a lot of me just searching for things on the 3d warehouse which isn't super interesting so to start off what we're going to do is we're going to go up to window we're going to go to 3d warehouse if you remember 3d warehouse is sketchup's free repository of models that you can use um, or that you can download into your models and so what we're going to do is we're going to start off we're going to look for cabinets so i'm just going to type in cabinet or cabinet and hit the enter key you can see how this is going to give you a ton of different results of varying levels of helpfulness and stuff like that what i'm going to do in this case is i'm going to click what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I usually sort by popularity so when I sort by popularity that usually gives you more of the cabinets that are kind of useful um, up somewhat near the top now you can tell that a bunch of these are more like complete kitchen models and that kind of thing the other thing I'm going to try and we're going to see what we're going to come up with is on the left hand side we're going to check this little or we're going to click on this little thing for manufacturer model and so when you click on the thing for manufacturer model what that's going to do is that's going to show you only manufacturer models in here and for some reason craft made and all of these instead of putting in cabinets um, they have put in things like a uh, complete kitchens so which isn't really what I want so we're gonna have to try a new search term so I'm probably gonna start off and just say something like base cabinet something a little more specific and so like medallion cabinetry has some great cabinets in here that you can use so maybe we're going to start with that and i'm actually going to start i'm going to go ahead and put this corner cabinet in so i'm just going to click on this then i'm just going to go over and i'm going to click the button for download it's going to ask if i want to load this directly into my sketchup model and i'm going to say yes and i'm just going to place this in the corner of my model and one thing that's a little tricky about this and something that you might have to do with a tiny house is you might have to customize this a little bit um, if you don't like the sizing on this because obviously a tiny house casework is designed to be a little bit different than regular casework but we're just gonna fill this in using um, just stuff in the 3d warehouse we're not going to get too specific with this and one thing you might try um, you don't have to do this but you might try turning your interior exterior walls off so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in and i'm going to go i'm going to pick up another cabinet real quick so i'm just going to go back to the 3d warehouse and we'll stay within medallion cabinetry because that seems to be kind of helpful or that seems to be kind of useful looking stuff and so what we're going to do is we're going to find another cabinet that kind of that kind of has the same style so in this case I'm just gonna go with this cabinet right here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna download that into my model as well so we're just gonna do the same thing where we're gonna place this we're gonna kind of align this with this cabinet right here and you do have to be a little bit careful when you do this just to make sure everything lines up and you don't get any like weird overlaps or anything like that so see how right there there actually needs to be a little bit of a gap in here but I was able to use this and I'm gonna turn my exterior walls layer off real quick cause it's kinda height or it's kinda making it hard to see everything I'm gonna turn my doors and windows off as well at least for the moment you can see how you can bring this in really easily and uh, kind of fill in your model this way if you want to and for this one I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode I'm just gonna make a copy so I'm gonna move it out on the green axis and just rotate it 90 degrees and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to align it right here with this point and maybe we'll copy one more cabinet over again using the move tool in copy mode 
just to keep this simple, we'll just make a copy right over here. And so now what I have in my model, if you look in your outliner, is you have several different cabinets. So you have a base cabinet here, here, then you've got your corner cabinet. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing we've done with everything else, where we're just going to take these and we're just going to select them by holding the control key and uh, clicking on each one of them. And you're just going to right click and you're going to put them in a group. And we're going to rename this group something like cabinets or casework or whatever you want to call this. I'm going to call this cabinets for right now. Um, I might even call it cabinets slash counters because I'm probably going to put the counters in this group as well. And so we're going to do the same thing we've done up above where we're going to click the plus button and we're going to add a layer. We're going to call it ARCH dash cabinets. And we're just going to take this group, we're going to select it, and we're going to scroll up to our entity info and we're going to put that on our cabinets slash counters layer. And so one thing about this that I don't like is when you bring in stuff in the 3D warehouse, sometimes, sometimes it has its own layers in here. So you can see how this actually has another layer that came in with this. Um, you can either leave this in here. I don't like to do this though, um, just because you don't want to junk up your list of uh, layers with additional layers that you're not using. So I'm just going to delete this by selecting it and clicking the delete layer button. And I'm just going to tell it to move the contents to the default layer because we've already put this group in the, the ARCH cabinets group so we really don't need to worry about this all that much so um, all, all that stuff that was on that layer we don't really need that layer anymore so it's okay to delete it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna model out the the countertop real quick and then we'll come back and we'll talk about starting to add fixtures and furniture and other things like that And so we have our counter on here. And what I like to do is I like to model this out just kind of on top like this. And then I'll push pull this out a little bit to get our overhang. So in this case, I'm going to push pull this out maybe like two inches or something like that. We'll do that over here as well. And then um, you might have an overhang on the ends as well. That just kind of depends a little bit on um, what you're going to have next to this. So in this case, I don't necessarily want an overhang because this is going to have like a little refrigerator or something like that. And that's one thing is I've kind of run out of room over here. And so maybe what I would want to do is I would want to find a different cabinet. So maybe like a, um, like a single cabinet or something like that from that same medallion cabinetry group. And so one thing I'm noticing in here is this is a little bit too wide. And so what I want to do is I'm going to delete this cabinet out and I'm just going to put a new cabinet in. So I'm going to go back into the 3D warehouse and uh, in the medallion cabinetry, there's actually collections in here. So we've been using, I believe the Briarwood base cabinets. And so I'm going to go look at this and I'm going to pick one out. I don't know why these are quite showing up this way, but I'm going to go pick one out that uh, looks like it's just a single instead of a double. So maybe something like this one right here that'll fit on the end with the two drawers and the single door. So I'm just going to download that and put that in instead. So I'll just drop this in here. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn my exterior wall off for a second and I'm just going to push pull this countertop so that it aligns with this end panel. So now what we've got is we've got our countertop and we've got our cabinets. And one thing we need to remember to do is this new cabinet that we brought in, we need to remember to drag it into our cabinet slash counters group so that they're on the same layer. So you can see I can turn this back on and off. And I'm also gonna triple click on this counter. I'm gonna make it a group and we're gonna rename this and we're gonna call this countertop. And we're going to drag that in our cabinet slash counters layer as well. And if you were to want to swap out counters or something like that, you could have a different layer and a different group for your counters. I'm not really worried about that for this example, but you could definitely do that. So, and I, I may add the rest of the cabinets and other things in here off screen just to keep this video short. But another thing I want to do is I want to come in and I want to start adding my fixtures. So like for example, I want this to have a um, I want this to have a sink in it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a sink. So I'm just going to go back to my window 3D warehouse and I'm going to find a sink. And we're just going to look for kitchen sink. 
And again, I'm gonna click on manufacturer model and I'm gonna sort by popularity. We'll see what this comes up with. Like we could probably just use this Sunstone single sync and just bring that into our model. The only thing I don't like about this is that's a seven megabyte file. So that's gonna be kind of a heavy file. So maybe I'll try to find something a little bit lighter. And you can see how some of these do have kind of a built-in um, base cabinet as well. So maybe we'll try this sink right here. This may be a little bit big, but we'll give it a shot. We're gonna drop it in here. That's probably gonna work about right. So I'm gonna take this counter or this uh, sink and I'm gonna drop it in this countertop. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna align it um, from a height standpoint using my inferencing along the blue axis. And then I'm gonna align it from a left to right standpoint. And then I'll do the same thing where I just move it along the green axis to align it from front to back. And so what that does is that drops this in here and uh, it kind of places it inside your countertop. And so what I need to do is I need to take this face and I need to intersect it with the model so this becomes an individual face. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna double click inside of here, then I'm gonna double click in my countertop and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click intersect faces with model. And so when I intersect my face with model, you can see how this intersected with my sink to create kind of an individual face. And so I can just click in here and I can just delete out these faces now. So you can see how that gave me a really easy intersection point in there. And the other thing that you may need to do, depending on the kind of cabinet that you have in here, is you may need to make a little bit of an adjustment to some of the bracing. Um, because obviously we're kind of like tying in some cabinets and some unrelated sinks. Um, but for this one, I would just make this I would just kind of do the same thing, but all I would do here is I would just push pull this back so that it's not showing through my sink. So now I have my sink in here and I would probably take my sink and first of all, I'm gonna rename this so that I know what it is. So I'm gonna rename this sink and then I'm gonna click and drag that inside my cabinets and counters group. Um, since it becomes a part of the counter, I kinda want that to be in my cabinets and counters group, so when I turn those off, that whole thing turns off. But then I'm also going to go back to my 3D warehouse and I'm gonna add a faucet. So I'm just gonna come up here to window 3D warehouse. I'm gonna add a faucet. And probably what I should've done is kitchen faucet. I'm gonna check the box for manufacturer model and I'm going to sort by popularity again. And if you're looking for a specific kind of faucet, you can do that as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drop this right here. And you can kind of use the inferencing to align that with wherever your midpoint is here. So if you want this to be like perfectly centered you can see how there's a lot of kind of hidden points in here that you can use to inference to. So, and you could put this either in your uh, fixtures group, um, or I'm just gonna drag this into my cabinets and counters group again. I, I want this to act as a part of the cabinet and counter. And when you do that, you can tell what this is, so we don't really need to rename that. So that'll give you kind of an idea of how you're gonna add your cabinets and stuff in here. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing for all your furniture as well as your like, uh, as well as things like your toilet and your shower. And you're gonna put those on their own group as well. So like furniture, for example, I'm gonna bring in a bed, whoops. And you can really bring in whatever bed you want. Um, I'm probably, because this is a tiny house, I'm probably gonna have to adjust this. This is probably gonna be a bit too big. And so I'm probably gonna take some liberties with um, the sizing of this object and everything like that. And we'll go ahead and leave this as is for right now, but let's say we were to also bring in like a couch. And we're gonna clean this component up just a little bit. I'm gonna move this a lot closer to the um, object origin. And this is one thing to be aware of when you're bringing things in from the 3D warehouse is a lot of the time you have to do a lot of cleaning up. And you can see how obviously this couch is way too big. Um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit just for the sake of this video and I'm just gonna bring it in. We'll align it and then I'm just gonna scale it down um, 
Again, with a tiny house, you'd probably have more of like a custom piece of furniture right here, but we're gonna go ahead and we'll use this couch right here. And you're just gonna take those two objects. So the couch and chair set and the bed, and you're gonna put those in a group. You're gonna right click on that group and you're gonna rename that furniture. And then we'll just create a new layer. We'll call it ARCH-Furniture. And then we'll just take that group by clicking on it, and click the drop down and put that on our furniture layer. So now we can turn our furniture on and off, we can turn our cabinets on and off, and we'll do the same thing for our fixtures in here. You'll just call it a layer like fixtures or something like that. And so what I would do here is I would select these two groups, I would click make group, and I would put this on a plumbing fixtures layer. So we would just add a layer for ARCH-plumbing fixtures, we'd organize that onto this layer. And now we can turn those on and off and well as well. And yes, I understand that this is probably not a realistic design for a tiny house toilet slash bathroom. And so I'll probably go back in and add a few more things, but I think you get the general idea. The idea is as you add things from the 3D warehouse, you just want to organize them and group them so that you can turn them on and off because that's going to get important, especially when we start doing floor plans like straight up and down. Sometimes you're going to want to be able to turn your furniture off because you're going to want to like show the rooms rather than the furniture itself. Um, same thing. We've already got our door swings on there. You can turn those on and off as well. So the whole point of this is just organization and keeping your things things ready to go inside of your model um, so that you can then export this into layout, which is what we're going to talk about in the next video. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, was this helpful to you? Do you like this layout series? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.